Welcome to Trinity Radio. I'm Braxton Hunter, and along with me today, as always, is... Jonathan Pritchett. Jonathan, we are thrilled that you are here today on Back Trinity Back from Radio. outer space, apparently, with a new background. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're in the subway now or something, or somebody's nice kitchen or something. Yeah. At the Trinity Radio Mansion. Just that about. We have. <laughs> the ridiculous size of your office. Well, that's one of the small perks. And there's Kevin O'Connor and MJ Jackson. And I so can't glad. make that joke yeah. anymore because it looks like I'm going to be getting an equally ridiculous sized office here. Not the- equally, but close. Oh, is it? Is it not quite as big? It's not quite as big. <laughs> Come on here. We've got to keep the power structure. Okay. That, this is a complete right. joke. We, we It's not like that at all. Uh, we we do happen to have pretty have, nice size two, offices. Yeah, it's one of the few parts. There's two rooms in this building yeah. that are really large, and Braxton occupies one of them, and it looks like they're going to be moving me, which means I have actually, you can see my office, like my entire office on Theology Geek Fitness and on Trinity Radio Extra where I shoot the videos. And it's a decent sized office, but I'm not looking forward to moving all those books. Been a long time, David says, since I caught you guys live. Glad to be here. Yeah, the live show, for anyone that's new, is a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more meandering in our commentary. But uh, some people like it that way. Kevin is back. Kevin Henderson, glad you are here. I'm here to drag right. the conversation down. Let's jump so into this, Pritchett. And yeah. th- did you know that there are pro-life atheists, that they actually exist? I did, and I actually I told them they need to start talking on Twitter because I was like, as long as you guys keep, you know, as long as the pro-choice crowd keeps bringing up religion, like keep your religious beliefs away from You're us, even it. though pro-lifers don't actually argue from religion, it, you know, abortion is murdering babies. Let's say that up front. Abortion is murdering babies. And it, it, what I was, what I, the point I was making on Twitter is you're essentially saying that religion is a necessary precondition for being moral enough to at least not murder babies. And so, I mean, atheists, as far back as Michael Shermer whining at that one debate with uh, at, at Willow Creek with William Lane Craig in the early 90s, like... Atheists are moral. We're moral too. And, and apologists bend over backwards and say, yes, yes, we know that you can be moral. Epistemologically, you can discover morality and follow it without yeah, there having are, the ontology. You're going to get to talk and about all that. Like, and you're, I'm just like, yeah, okay. Hey, yeah, I mean. Hey, hey, you're going to get to talk about all that stuff because yes. there, you're going to take a quiz later, folks, after we talk about this and we do invite your questions. Honestly, atheist who's here to be grumpy. Well, uh, you may be grumpy for part of this, although that's not the temperament I'm used to from you. You must bottle it up. Don't do that. That's bad for you. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. Don't listen to me. But But in any uh, case, we're going to take a quiz in a little while to find out the religious typology of Dr. Jonathan Pritchett. And I'm happy that there's pro-life atheists because they can say this is they can say what argue a pro-life atheist can basically make the same exact arguments you and I make against abortion. And it, it's not a religious thing. Yeah. Um, well, and I am, I am mostly against murdering babies. That's, that's what I say. So, um, <laughs> there, there are all kinds of things that could be said, uh, obviously about the commentary you just yeah. gave. But first of all, Kevin O'Connor says, I am mostly pro-life atheist, but I'm not uh, on Twitter. Ha ha. And you cannot convince me. To make one. Account, yeah, I, I would never try but, to. Con- Twitter is a cesspool but, of idiocy. But, but, but and getting I'm there in, to contribute. But getting into this a little bit with this, what what uh, what you might be thinking is, well, yeah, obviously, obviously there are pro life atheist bracks, and atheism is not a worldview. Atheism, as we are told, and I'm happy to to agree, is in principle a position on the existence of God, or depending on how you define that, the lack of belief in God, or whatever. But it has to do with God's existence. It's it's a propositional type of thing, and so, uh, even if some people also think of it as a dispositional type of thing. But the, but the reality is, so you've got you've got this over here with atheism being one thing, but then uh, not it just being about one thing. But then when you're talking about the issue of abortion, it is often thought to be or said to be primarily a religious concern. That were the the only real objections that come are religious objections. If we could shut these religious people down, then nobody would really have a problem with this. Now, no one says it exactly like that, but if that's the case, if there really are atheists out there, of course everyone knows that pro-life atheists exist. But that's quite the point. If they do exist, 
then it, it, it doesn't, all it means is, one thing that it does mean is that if you're a person out there who uses that line that it's, well, it's just about religious stuff or it's just because you're Christians because of your religion or whatever, what are you going to do with these uh, atheist pro-lifers? Yeah, I mean, and, and a lot of them, you know, a lot of their reasoning and arguments um, are similar to ours. Now, granted, religious people have other things, other considerations that, I don't think necessarily add to the argumentation, mm -hmm. but are other considerations that religious people have, but that's irrelevant to the arguments that people who are against abortion make in general. Yeah. And I, I see a lot of, I understand like the, the mostly pro-life atheists are like, you know, at early stages, I, I get wh wh where they can on that. But I mean, a lot of people have seen that it went from safe, legal and rare to shout your abortion, and I wish I and that one unfunny comedian lady saying, "I wish I would have had an abortion," so that I, you know, I mean, this stuff's ridiculous. And now you have people on the floor of the Senate saying they can't outright condemn infanticide, like after it's born. Can you? Well, I just reject that and say that abortion is hell. I mean, these people are insane. Or instead, rather say. Um, well, that that's not what's happening, but it is happening. Well, OK, well, whether or not it's actually happening um, is, is why can't you denounce it? Right. <laughs> but but, but it, it is happening and they know it's happening. That's why yeah. they don't want to. I mean, they're just lying at that point, because if, if you cite one instance in D.C., well, then it is happening. I don't know. That you know, anyone the governor, trying, the I, previous governor from Virginia was like, yeah. well, I mean, if the baby's delivered, we'll we'll put it on a table and make it comfortable, and then we'll have a conversation and make a decision what we do. And you, people are like, okay, this is a little bit much from the safe, legal, and rare mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. you know? And then, of course, anytime I get blowback on Twitter about, oh, you're just going to force rape victims to carry it, and I always ask them, so you're for a nationwide a ban minute. on abortion except for rape victims? Well, no. Okay, then. Uh, you know, rape victims are not your puppets. They are not your argumentative playthings. They are not your rhetorical toys uh, to justify all the other abortions. And rape victims deserve better than that. And that is actual hatred of rape victims to use them as some sort of way Pritchett, that you can get all this other stuff. And it's disgusting. Pritchett, you, <laughs> hyperbolic here. That these people are not, you know that you said some things there that, that invite caveat. Like, for example, you said the same thing there, very cautiously worded, People like that mm -hmm. are, are using, or what, how did you say it? Yeah, people like that are using rape victims as their rhetorical playthings. I mean, people like that are using rape victims as their rhetorical playthings. So the point you just want to make is they're you, they, they, you're, well, that implies motives. You're saying they don't actually care about the rape victim. They don't, because if, because, well, that, but you don't know what they think about rape I'm victims. I'm sorry, but if rape victim, if you're saying up, they are using them as a means to an end one way or the other by taking that minority or that particular set of cases and then using that as a to way extrapolate to say, out we, to, we yeah. get all this too. I it's see the, so disingenuous. I see it's the sentiment so, that you're so, trying to express. Yeah, it is so tacky and tasteless and disrespectful to the victims of rape to use them as like some sort of. Plaything. Well, let's begin reading this article arguments. that is here from this. This is this is an older article it's from 2017, but it still makes the same point. We're talking about our, what it means to be yeah, pro-life. You had to and go atheist. back to 2017. No, mm -hmm. it's just what I saw. <laughs> it came up. The atheist case against abortion: colon, Respect for Human Rights by Kelsey Hazard. Uh, this is from America, the Jesuit Review, which I looked up, and it looked like it was um, uh, like a left-leaning but Christian a sort of. Uh, thing. But in any case, I'm an atheist, a 29-year-old woman, well-educated at secular institutions, and I lean liberal on many issues, including same-sex marriage and climate change. I am also dedica a dedicated pro-life activist working to make abortion unthinkable. The abortion industry would have you believe that people like me do not exist. They would have you believe that the pro-life movement is almost exclusively old white men with a few pearl-clutching church ladies thrown in. This characterization is insulting to both young and old. The older pro-life leaders of today are the pioneering young adult activists of the 1970s who courageously dissented from Roe v. Wade, and they have recruited new generations of pro-lifers to follow in their footsteps. Millennials in the movement call ourselves the pro-life generation. Thoughts so far, Pritchett? None. Keep going. These are, there are important differences between the millennial generation and those that came before. One of the biggest is religion. The well-reported decline in church attendance is driven largely by young adults. 
Over a third of millennials tell pollsters they have no religious affiliation. Compare the 23% for Generation X and 17% for baby boomers. And even among millennials, we have maintained a religious affiliation. Many favor same-sex marriage and show less appetite for the culture war than their elders do. Oh, you can tell this is 2017 because... Their appetite has significantly increased since 2017. For that's that's hogwash. Yeah, man. this more this more secular generation still shows up to save preborn children and their mothers from the tragedy of abortion. This puzzles some abortion supporters who had assumed they would benefit from demographic changes. The key to understanding this discrepancy is to realize that it is not a discrepancy at all. We see abortion not as a cultural war issue or um, or as a religious issue, but as a human rights issue. Most pro-choice people, well, that's part of it. I'll just read when I get there. It is not enough to understand uh, humana vitae. Indeed, lecturing an atheist on the finer points of Catholic dogma is surely counterproductive. To work with pro-life young people and to change the minds of pro-choice millennials, you must be able to articulate the human rights case against abortion. The pro-life pioneer, Dr. Mildred Jefferson, said it best. I am not willing to stand aside and allow this concept of expendable human lives to turn this great land of ours into just another exclusive reservation where only the perfect, the privileged, and the planned have the right to live. That's a sentiment that anyone from any religious or non-religious background can get behind. Comments? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I I 100% agree. Most secular pro-choice people are well-meaning and affirm a commitment to human rights. Most are horrified by ableism but close their eyes to the often lethal consequences of prenatal genetic testing. No, this is so 2017 because most of them now are like just championing their ableist. There was that woman on. So, but your point is just that it's gotten worse. You don't understand. I have, I have autistic people in my family and disabled people and just, it'd be better if they didn't live. That's basically what she was saying. And then she tried to walk it back after everyone heard exactly what she said and roasted her for it because it's uh, obscene what these people are saying these days. Um, uh, let's see. Pointing out these contradictions is a delicate business. Many young pro-choicers have been exposed to years of ad hominem propaganda. They have been taught that pro-lifers are hypocrites who do not care about children after they are born. They have been taught that we hate women. They may be close to someone who has had an abortion or even had an abortion themselves and believe that becoming pro-life will require them to issue fire and brimstone condemnations of post-abortive women. Now, even if you're a person out there and says, well, wait a minute, you're talking about they've been taught this. They have absorbed this from the culture. The culture is teaching things, and this is very much part of the culture. You find this stuff. I mean, if you are on Twitter, you can yeah, see this. Yeah, I mean, just, just that whole line that they don't care uh, about after, they're, after born. they're born. I mean, like, mm-hmm. who does the most care? And now you have Elizabeth Warren out there attacking pregnancy crisis centers. Like, like on the same side as those who've been vandalizing. Like, it's somehow bad to, to help women along. And, and it just this stuff is just... You can tell this is 2017, but and this but, is uh, anecdotal. But I've but, known but here, multiple people who I run like those make... crisis pregnancy centers, and in fact, I've spoken at pro-life ev- like right to life events, uh, most recently a couple of years ago up in uh, yeah. near here, nearby. A... And here's the thing: those people running those crisis pregnancy centers uh, up there, it was some of our graduates were involved in it. But the thing is, they're not despicable human beings who are out to. Um, do this just for political, whatever, blah, blah, blah. These are wonderful human beings that I've interacted with. Yes, and I want to make this point very clear. Love young women. Regardless of how much philanthropy that you and I have done, irrelevant. I mean, It's still not okay to kill babies. Right. Even if I didn't give two poops what happened to anyone Uh post-birth, it does not change the argument. It would not make it moral to kill them. To to, to murder. Now, you say, well, but I don't think it is the murder of a baby. Well, that's a di- then we could talk about that on a different issue. But if the response is is what we just said, well, then we that you will you may be right or something or regardless of your arguments, you don't care about them after they're born. Yeah. Well, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, it does matter that they care, they are cared for after they're born, and people like us want to give toward things that will make no, that notice, possible. But even if we didn't care at all, the point is, yeah, it would still not make it and, ethical and, or moral. And to, that's totally disingenuous as well. Like, what are you going to do after they're born? Uh, okay, well, why are you, you know, it's like you care now that they're born, but you, you think it's okay to murder them before they're born, right? Mm-hmm. What, what exactly is the argument there? You're saying things would be easier if we just murdered them instead of had more living people. Right. Right. Oh, well, they they might be well, living. Again, they, they might wouldn't live in say poverty. it's murder, but yes. They might live in poverty. Oh, so you, well, maybe join those psychopaths that think that we need to depopulate the world. And you, are you favoring for ridding the world of poor people? 
Is I mean, is that your argument? Let's get rid of poor people. That's kind of awful. I mean, they don't like think through what they're saying here about, well, if you let them live, they might have to live in dire poverty. Now, granted, I always take that with a grain of salt because, I mean, in America, we have fat, homeless people with smartphones. So when we talk about poverty relative to a global scale, I'm, I'm a little bit, okay, I'll roll my eyes a little bit at that. But, but the solution to poverty is not, let's make sure that we kill more people potentially poor people before they exist. The best antidote to these fears is not argument, but action. Examine your own life and ensure that your priorities reflect concerns for human life at all its stages. Befriend pro-choice people and let them see what brings pro-life or what being pro-life really means on the ground. Do not expect they have learned this from the mainstream media. Now that's true. They won't have learned, they won't necessarily have learned it from the mainstream media. And the thing is, I've actually known, I can think of a couple that we were friends with in Nashville, Tennessee years ago. And just from having normal conversations just here and there, yeah. uh, she actually changed her mind about some of these things. It's because she saw that I wasn't like, I wasn't some guy with a bullhorn like I am now. <laughs> it wasn't like that. I was just somebody she knew, right? Uh, so, all right. When the time for discussing the issue comes, be gentle and ask questions. Pritch it. The Socratic method, allowing people to discover uh, internal contradictions for themselves usually works best for more on this technique. I highly recommend the equal rights. I can't, I don't know what that is. Not, I don't know what that is. Is that a thing? I don't know. Do you know what that is? No, we're not going to promote it. We don't know what it is, but if they're doing great things, well, I mean, go check it out. Yeah. I mean, go check it out. See what it is. is when the we article survey, linked in the description. Yeah. Then when, the, when we survey the lives destroyed by abortion over the past five decades, it is easy to become overwhelmed and discouraged, but we are making real progress. This is an incredible, exciting time to be pro-life. If we work together, secular and religious, young and old, from every race and gender, I firmly believe we can end abortion in my lifetime. Yes. And well, praise the Lord if that happens. We um, have a lot of work to do because now it's back in the state's hands. So. Okay, let's take a look at the questions or the comments before we go on to our next activity. And let's see what has been being said. You know, it's interesting that, I mean, like, take, there, there is a Christian humanist tradition, too, that obviously predated, you know, the the proliferation of, of atheism by centuries, right? <clears throat> you could say, I mean, even in the, I mean, people can say what they want, even about uh, Calvin and Geneva and Servetus and all that. Calvin was uh, a humanist, and he was a Christian humanist as well, if you read all of Calvin. So, at least, at least in in his thinking, so I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of humanism in the Christian tradition, you know, as well. You know, humanism say we're pro-human, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's not surprising that humanists would discover some of the same types of things, even from a secular perspective. Sure, uh, that mm -hmm. would that would align them with killing humans is bad, right? And so. Coming to that conclusion, you know, there, there's a lot of the, um, what was it? The Rational Response Squad. Remember them from the early barely, 2000s? Barely. Yeah, I mean, they, they kind of fizzled out. Well, I mean, they were also running around, you know, they were an atheist club and they were running around promoting like antinatalism and those, all, all that stuff, you know. Um, and it seems like the more, rational to borrow their word atheists have kind of moved away from this just no this just not the right way to go about all of these things so i yeah. I, I happen to have no problems aligning myself with pro-life atheists who want to work for a common goal gregory fisher shows up we love you gregory and thank you for that ten dollar super chat and he, he's wanting to make a statement that uber Scheiser will definitely see which says Roe v. Wade wasn't a decision until 1972. After that, you see evangelicals moving. To yeah, they were having a discussion in the chat, Christianity Today, and reporting uh, like Carl F. Henry and some other people that, that, that you know, you, like we talked about in a previous show about even Norman Geisler changed his entire section on that from his first edition of Christian Ethics to the second edition because he took more of a pro-choice stance. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I mean, that... that what this sh should tell us is not that, you know, oh, Christians used to be one way and then they politicized it and became another. No, it's that people can change their minds, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that you had pro-choice Christians and still do in some cases uh, for reasons that escape me, uh, but the, you would have like a, a secular atheist who may have been pro-choice at one point, mm -hmm. but been persuaded uh, maybe by another secular atheist not someone who's a christian or whatever mm -hmm. but or mm -hmm. came to just 
realize that wait these people yeah they change their mind yeah people change their mind yeah so so christianity today nobody heralds them as that is the christian perspective right for, right yeah okay uh honestly the atheist have. says if we suppose as i do and that if is of course the very issue that we're going to have to be at contention about personhood is not achieved until a capacity to experience is anatomically possible then prior to 20 weeks no person is being killed or harmed in any way so here's my problem with this and and i i I will say this, if I was, I mean, I think that if I, if I was Mm pro-choice, I think I would tie it to consciousness most intuitively, or as you put it here, some sort of possibility of experience and the the, the body is such that you could possibly have some kind of an experience. Um, And so a lot of people do that. A lot of people don't even, at first, don't even think about it as though that this is controversial to say. Well, hey, if it's not conscious, if this thing, if this being, whatever it is, is not conscious yet, well, then in, in no wise can it be a person, you know, and all that whole thing. But here's the thing. And I know your thing about this is a terminological point, which is just to say we always meant human being. Uh, so when we say human being, we mean person, person and human being are the same thing. Yeah. But but we know that we, the we definition about, of person we, is a human. Being I know. I just said it for I just individual. said it for you. Now you're just saying back what I just said. I know. And I said it so you wouldn't have to say it back. So here's the thing. Yeah, but you've thing. been talking too long, and they're here to hear me. The, so. so here's the thing. Um, I, I would think that, I, I might think that is the right way to go about this intuitively, that consciousness is important. But here's the thing. I don't know how you arrived at, like, that is um, an opinion. <laughs> it's like, that's just your opinion, man. It may be an educated guess, but it's a guess nonetheless. So here's the tough spot that we're in. If you do believe that murdering a human being is immoral, whether you're a Christian or an atheist or something else, if you think that murdering a human being is immoral and we're trying and you believe that prior to birth, we're talking about a person that is a human being and a person in the womb. And we're talking about where to draw that line. Okay. I think that's what you and I are doing here. Well, I love that. That is a great place to have a discussion. The problem is any place you pick, if you're a secularist, you're, you're kind of just, you're either deciding it for everyone. Like, you're deciding it for the unborn in any case mm-hmm. um, when there's either not a fact of the matter or you don't know what the fact of the matter is. Or that second point, which is more direct, is you, you just don't know and you're kind of making an educated guess. Here's the thing about that. I'm all for making educated guesses about some things, but uh, that's actually not a very widespread amount of things that I think we should just make educated guesses about, especially when it becomes really important, like life and death depends on it. And if we're not sure at what at what point this should be considered a person, well, then let's not kill it. That's my thing. If you don't know, then don't kill it, right? I mean, it's like yeah. the phone booth example. If you're not sure that whether there's a person in the booth, but you need to get through the doorway and the booth is in the way, don't blow up the booth because <laughs> we don't know but that there's a person in there. Right. And that's basically what we're saying is here with this. And I get that we can, well, but you don't know the strong case I can make. You don't know the strong case that other people have made for consciousness and all that. I get it. It may be a really uh, persuasive and intuitive case, but we're talking about the lives of millions and millions and millions and millions of people. And so ultimately it's still going to be an educated guess. And there's definitely not a scientific settling of the question. And so that's my take on that. Now, have at it, Pritchett. Well, again, um, the, the whole point of obfuscating around personhood is because they can't dispute its humanhood, right? And they, they, they want, well, yeah, we are killing a human being, right? Well, and then a person is a human being regarded as an individual. All your metaphysics about when they have consciousness, when they have experience or whatever, well, Again, there are grown adults that may not ha- have the capacity for consciousness or experience at, at certain points or if they're yeah. under anesthesia or whatever. You can't just go around killing human beings that aren't currently conscious or having experiences uh, for some medical reason or another. So, no. And that, and, and that discussion, we did a whole much longer take on that two weeks ago. Or yeah. I think it was two and weeks so, ago. And so, I mean, it's just, this is just, no. It, it's the word game to try to smuggle in a whole bunch of metaphysics when it's irrelevant. Don't kill people. See, look here, here, uh, agreement across the aisle. Kevin says, if you don't know, maybe don't kill it. I do agree here. And this explains much of my mostly pro-life stance currently. Yeah. 
That's the that's the thing. And so that and the way this gets couched, I'll tell you where I first heard this. And you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that Norman Geisler, you said, and yeah. I didn't know this, had originally been permissive about abortion in in his uh, explanation Christian, of the, biblical the morality Christ, and stuff. Yeah, Christian but then he changed his mind, yeah. right? In his Christian ethics book, yeah. So, um, so, so, uh, when when Geisler said that, I, I got really interested, and I went back and read through the systematic theology because he has. Uh, I know people like to take shots at Geisler's four volume systematic theology, but I'll tell you what: if you are new to studying theology, and you don't, and, and you're not, you're a non Calvinist. Uh, because there are very few non-reformed systematic theologies that are, that, are, that, that you want to check out. Adam Harwood's going to have one that's going to be awesome. But Geisler's is great. It's a four-volume set. You can get one volume. But here's the great thing. If you get the four-volume at the back of all of these. I don't think it's available anymore. Well, at the back, you, on Amazon, you can find anything. At the back of these, you can just paper. find all this content, like three books worth of content on just topics, 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 yeah. topics. And he did this one, and he brought out this point that I've heard many people make since, but I think it's really great. And it is that what you're talking about here, when you get to this stage where me and Kevin are, where we're talking about, hold on, if you don't know for sure, then then should you kill it or not? We want to say, well, no, you don't. That that would be reckless, right? But the thing is, what you're feeling there, what you sense there, I think, on either side of this is the play against the two virtues, the virtue of liberty, which the woman should have, but also the virtue of life, which the child should have. And when you have, or might have, if yeah. you're a secularist, right? So when you have these two things in conflict, one of them has to, if we can't know for sure, one of them has to fade. Well, which one takes precedence, life or liberty? Life takes precedence. And, and then you're done. Is, the, is I, I can hear an atheist like a uh, cosmic skeptic, for example, say, mm -hmm. that's great, Braxton, now do animals. Uh, about what about animals? Now do animals. I don't think animals are, are uh, human persons. Right. So but it's just conscious. a discussion about why, and I've got all kinds of reasons why. Why you eat chicken. Hmm. Well, that would get into my theological perspectives. Yeah. So would a consistent pro-life atheist be someone who was vegan, you think? I don't know. They may have other ways of trying. Like the well, obviously, thing. you and I are going to think about what morality is like for an atheist very differently, right? Than they think about yeah. themselves. But if I was an atheist and I thought about it the way I think that somebody like Matt Dillahunty or somebody does, who says, "Well, there is a, we can make up a subjective goal, but then there's an objective, better or worse way to get to that goal, and the goal is f human flourishing." Okay, well then I could draw a serious distinction between animals and humans. Yeah, human flourishing, so I'm going to have steak because it mm -hmm. helps me flourish and make me happy. Mm -hmm. so. But I think you would still need to build into your morality, which I, I just don't think, I just think this is a house built on sand. Yeah. But, you're, but you would need to build into your morality uh, something. You wouldn't want people feeling like it's okay just to go kill So you'd just animals. be admi admittedly speciest in that sense. If that's the goal, the human flourishing is your overall stated goal, Yeah. then yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah um okay you asked me to explain the consistency of my atheism jonathan <laughs> when i'm not an atheist <laughs> current research indicates that self-aware may not occur for up to two years post-birth therefore the person argument would justify infanticide thank you for showing up logical plausible probable and i like that uh profile pick uh haven't seen you in a while and I, i'm yeah. glad to see you're supporting dc and a fantastic dc character there in the flash, the flash. And showing an affinity was, for brick walls. The Flash was always my favorite from the, you know, my childhood, uh, and then my teenage years became Superman. But I always was 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 partial to the Flash because I, I I thought ultimately, the Flash was the most dangerous out of all of them, out of all superheroes. Yeah. See, Kevin says he admits to being speciesist. Yeah. I mean, if you eat cheeseburgers, you have to, right? So, I mean. I, I eat cheeseburgers. I'm is this true, Pritchett? You're into this stuff a lot, like the legal side and the political stuff. Is this true that, a, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to question you, Darren, but I'm, I'm just seeing it online and I'd like to know if Pritchett yeah, Actually, yes. That, that a boyfriend slipping unbeknownst abortion pills to pregnant girlfriend is prosecuted under murder. Yes. Now, there has been some debate, and in fact, a lot of the 
crazy pro-choice activists recognizing the problems with, like, I remember the Scott Peterson trial. Remember that? Where Scott Peterson murdered his wife who was pregnant? And I remember around that time, there was a discussion because that case was being discussed uh, and he was being prosecuted for double murder. And they were like, well, you know, some of the pro-choice mm -hmm. people were saying that they don't think that that should necessarily be the case because it implicitly acknowledges that a life was taken, you know, and I, I, they didn't want to do that or that a person was taken. Uh, so. Faithiest atheist. Thank you for that super chat. I really do appreciate our friendship online. Yes. says we can say a zygote is the uh, is the earliest moment when all the programming is there to form into the aspects we think of as human eventually that's a potential universal metric if you're looking for one i'll let you take that one Pritchett. well i mean yes and, and and the point is like if 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 braxton hunter is in a coma and we know that he'll be uh, out of it in nine months um whatever point you you draw in, in, inside the womb we know what it will inevitably be in nine months so it's anywhere it go back to sled at any point you're just making arbitrary things so yeah um my um, tattoo artist name is barry allen the alter ego of Flash. all right yeah. we're gonna go we're gonna do the next fun part of the show now this is gonna be a fun activity and so we're gonna make dr jonathan pritchett take a test uh, a quiz of sorts uh, let's go into the quiz room, Dr. Pritchett. You'll see it here. And here we are. And I'm trusting that everyone's able to see that. I know that you are. Like, as what a segue from abortion and pro, pro, pro life atheism to a religious typology quiz. Yeah. I mean, hey, we move fast on this program. I mean, I could put, animal. okay, what would it, it's like the thing? I could put a little jingle in and be like, and now it's time to move on to the second segment of our show, like, like the, like, people that work for big platforms do or something. Mm -hmm. But, but I just take it that that's kind of like the, the, the rock band going off stage See, this come right back on needed, at the end of a show. This is, this yeah. would have been River Sensei Raw. This yeah. would have been his perfect chime in point. For yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next days section, of the guys. past days yeah, of the past. Oh, past. what did I do? Okay. But maybe we do need a third person. Here. We need Michelle in here. All right, here we go. Okay, boys. This is from Pew. The next section. This is from Pew Research. Yeah, we need a mom to we tell us. What in here. Pew Research Center. I wouldn't get through my life if it weren't for women telling me what to, what to do. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, Pew Research Just Center. Just like a compliment. Religious typology quiz. Here it is, Pritchett. Are you a Sunday stalwart? By the way, that's what I am. I did this already. Solidly secular or somewhere in between. Take our quiz to find out which one of the religious typology groups is your best match and see how you compare with our nationally representative survey of more than 4,000 U.S. adults. You may find some of these questions are difficult to answer, Pritchett. For example, you may see yourself in more than one category or feel that none quite describes you. I have great confidence about that. That's okay. In those cases, pick the answer that comes closest. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I don't need perfect. Exactly. I take quizzes all the time like this. I don't need perfect alignment. I know what they're after. So Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Aside from weddings and funerals, Dr. Pritchett, how often do you attend religious services? More than once a week, once a week, once or twice a month, a few times a year, seldom or never? I'm going to say once or twice a month. Once or twice a month. Oh, because I'm whoops. not going to count my online viewing as, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because sometimes we do catch it online if we're yeah. not home or whatever. But I, Well, this quiz was made just a little bit before covid so um, they may have made a category for that if, if it had. But in any case, yeah. once or twice a month. Here we go. All right. Um, you answered once a week, even though I didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, but I know that, that that's not always true. It's not always true. But in my case, I, actually, than I actually will average out to more than once a week because I I, throughout, first of all, even to this day, but certainly throughout my adult life, we're talking about five nights a week on average. For so long. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, you were doing the meetings where you yeah. you were the guy <laughs> at the surface leading it and sweating through your. Seat. I'm not. Quit trying to shift the focus here. What okay. are you, Adam? Okay. In the garden, just quit shifting the blame. I just, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, Which of these statements comes closer to your view, Pritchett? Even if neither is exactly right, it is not necessary to believe in God in order to be moral. 
and have good values, or it is necessary to believe in God in order to be moral and have good values. I know you answered it is not necessary. Yeah, I did. Right, I did. because that's the apologist's answer. Well, it's the correct answer. I'm answering <laughs> the other way. It is necessary to believe oh, in God. Oh boy, you're going to you're going to be No, I said that at the beginning. They're going to have to make thing. a new category right. for how Oh no, cuz you don't go to church every week, so that knocks that I out. I mean, I I yes and no. I mean, but I'm going to I I'm there in spirit. <laughs> do, do <laughs> when you, I'm watching the live stream <laughs> I would have put every week for you with the live stream if you really do watch it every week. I do. Uh, but in any case, uh, we're ready to move with this. It, you're saying it is necessary to believe in God in order to be moral and have good values. My my mind tells me no. Atheists heart, cannot help people across the street. My, the old ladies. Heart, uh, my heart tells me to trigger them by saying no, I, I don't. No. So what you're telling me is you don't actually believe the answer you're giving. You just want to do it for shock value. No, I, I okay, here's my justification. Okay. I, there's a part of me that delights in the shock value. Yeah. But look, okay, it's not that they can't do trivially good things like like help a little old lady. Well, when you say trivially, yeah. I think you mean in light of eternity, right? Right. But it, but if we're just looking at a Christian cradle to grave, Versus an atheist cradle to grave, don't you th don't don't you know? <laughs> I should say. Oh, the atheists. there's horrible Christians and there's very moral atheists. Uh, yeah, well, right? that's what the question says. Right, but but there's it's still I think on the whole, there. That's not the question. In history, the average Christian is not like the one who did all, all sorts of evil in the name of Jesus, right? right. So I'm mean, just saying, on the whole. If I was to look at the morality of most Christians in human history, not the awful things that we can look in church history, but just, you know, the peasants, Christians who are okay. trying to do good, you know, or whatever. And then I look at the morality of the atheists. I'm going to be like, uh, it seems to me that on average and on the whole belief in God is, is, is necessary to be moral and have good values. Um, the point, uh, of this whole thing is to, uh, the point of the moral arguments as they're often brought up in apologist circles, uh, just so that people don't I'm not get taking confused. this as an individual case by case basis, basis of this atheist or that atheist, this Christian. Yeah. Or that, I'm saying on the whole, yeah, I actually think that you have a much more moral I know, but, society. But I, was, but I was like actually just saying something. Yeah, I know. But and you I, just talked over me. But this is about me and my answers. I want our audience to know that when uh, most of the time when Christians bring moral arguments, what they're trying to show is not that Christians are better because they believe in God. Even if that turned out to be true, that's not the point. The point is just that we're all aware of the existence of morality yeah. and that and that there seems to be better and worse. But ways atheists to aren't going to share my view of morality anyway, because a lot of mm -hmm. the things that I believe are immoral as a Christian... Pritchett, you know that you just want to be provocative. You know that the true answer is no, the top one. No, no. And the only way you could have gotten around this you didn't take was to say something like, well, no, because all their uh, good, it's all like filthy rags. And uh, No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying on, on average, I think that, that, that not on an individual basis, I think that uh, it's necessary to be moral and have good values because I don't think that a lot of atheists have very good values because of my value system. But if any of them do... Then it means that it is, but it is not I, like I said, I'm not going to say. I said on average, as taken as a whole, I'm, I'm not leaving it the, the case way you by said case. It. I'm yes. leaving it the way you Thank said you. it. It's your quiz. You can answer it Just however you want. Just because some individual atheist shares my view on morality for reasons that would escape me on why they think this. How is much better. meaning and fulfillment, if any, does your religious faith provide you with, Pritchett? Uh, a great deal. Okay. Uh, how much meaning and fulfillment does it provide you with, Pritchett? A great deal. <laughs> oh, no, it's a different question. Yeah, meditation. If any like do it. spiritual practices yes. such as meditation provide Spiritual providing. disciplines and meditation, absolutely. Great yes. deal? Yes. Or some? Great deal. great deal. You think I'm a bad person now. Imagine how much worse I'd be if I didn't engage in the spiritual <laughs> <That's> disciplines. <laughs> it's a good thing you're a practicing Christian. Yes. You're one of those that the atheists say, if that's how you think, then you better stay a Christian, right? Right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Keep Pritchett. This is the new atheist movement. Keep Pritchett safe. <laughs> how much meaning you and wouldn't fulfillment? like me as an atheist how much meaning you wouldn't like me as an atheist you wouldn't like how me much meaning and fulfillment if any does being outdoors and experiencing nature provide you be honest 
Some. Okay. Except during the summer. I hate the summertime. It's too hot. I came up to Indiana from Arkansas to escape this bitter summer, and it, this is a stone's throw from Kentucky. It's still hot. I haven't looked at what the comments are saying about all of this. Um, and look, Christians, do not let any atheist be more moral than you. You need to out-moral them. Don't listen to those people say, ah, oh, you're just preaching morals and moralism. No, be moral. Be more moral than atheists, Christians, please. Try harder. It's called sanctification. Do that thing. The Holy Spirit's there to, to, to carry you along. All right. Considering everything, what impact That's a lot. do churches and religious organizations do churches and religious organizations have on American society? They do American more good society? than harm. That's easy. They do more good than The people than who harm. would answer otherwise are insane and stupid. Other than doing other than during religious services. How often do you pray? Several, Several times, times a day, a day once absolutely. a day, a few times? Absolutely. Several times a day? Yes, I got okay. it. Yes, absolutely. Pray it without ceasing, Pritchett. Yeah. Which comes closest to your views, even if none is exactly right? The Holy Scripture is the Word of God and should be taken literally word for word. Or the Holy Scripture is the Word of God, but not everything in it should be taken literally yes, word for that, word. That, or the, the Holy Scripture is a book written by people and is not the Word of God. See, I could answer either one of the top two, depending on what you meant by literally, but I think I know what they meant literally, so I'm going to go with the second. And, they, and to their credit, that's why they say it may not be exactly right. I take the Bible seriously. So Okay. Um, are you currently active in church groups or other religious or spiritual organizations? Absolutely. It's part of my job. <laughs> <laughs> and outside of your job. Yes, really. and outside of my job, too. To what extent do you consider yourself a very religious religi person? I'm very, very religious, religious very somewhat religious. religious. Yeah, You're going I'm very, very religious. religious, I did, too. Yeah, very it's not about a religion, Bridget. That's the dumbest You know what thing it's ever. about? It's about a relationship. Uh, right? Uh, no. <laughs> to what extent do you consider yourself a spiritual person? Very spiritual, somewhat, somewhat. not to... Okay, so I'm trying. Spiritual. I'm a working pro. That's why I said practice so much, right? I'm trying to do better. Which of these statements comes closest to your views, even if none is exactly right? I believe in God as Absolutely. described in the Bible. Absolutely. Old Testament, too, you Boyd fans and Rousers. For the fans. podcast listeners, which yeah. that'll happen again someday. Um, Jesus I do drowns not believe, babies. It said either I believe in God as described in the Bible, I do not believe in God as described in the Bible. Jesus I do is believe. God. God drowned babies in the flood. Yes, Jesus drowned. I'm fine with it. Do you believe in heaven? Be, be afraid. You got to repent and believe the gospel. Do you believe in heaven? Absolutely. Do you believe in hell? Yes. Do you believe in spiritual energy located in physical things such as mountains, trees, or crystals? Uh, it depends on what you mean by spiritual energy. Um I think they're just talking about new age stuff here. So I'm going to say, no, I don't believe, but I want to caveat that. that the you have ideas, to contextualize them, these questions yeah, a little the bit. The ideas actually. behind it, yeah. but not, How much, not if at all, do you find your religious beliefs help you in your family relationships? A, a lot, lot, some, not a lot. Much. Okay, a lot. All right, we're going to find out, Pritchard. Are you nervous? No. Here we go. Sunday stalwarts. Yes. Along with 17% of the public. Yes. Let's find out more about you. Sunday stalwarts are the most religious group. Not only do they actively participate their practice their faith, but they also are deeply involved in their religious congregations. For descriptions of the other typology groups, click the tabs above. Okay. So, um, is this like compared to uh, how other people answered? Yeah. I am a Sunday stalwart. I am too. Well, we kind of knew that. Not much of a surprise there, is it? Pritchett, they're going to clip that and say that you are a Pharisee. That's fine. <laughs> I've been called worse. What? Christians what? and atheists alike are the two camps that have called me the worst names. Right? And I have to say that, actually, the Christians have probably been worse to me than atheists. And the atheists can't stand... I'm like, the atheists hate my guts. Except for Pine Creek, he's a fan. But ugh. it's about relationship prime. You know better than that. Ugh. I, I, this, I, this slogan, Christianity is the pure and undefiled religion. Ideally. Well, yeah. Now, Pritchett, here's, here's a question. I, I, I like this topic. Um, 
back to the abortion thing. Honestly, Atheist says, I think the common intuition that sentient aliens would be morally considerable as persons defeats Bridget's human equals person argument pretty clearly. We didn't have to go there, honestly. Wrong. Atheist, because in the last time we discussed this, I said to Bridget, you can't think of any uh, persons that are not humans. And of course, as Christians, we Yes, do. we can. But then also, here's the question. Not all questions. persons are humans, but all humans are persons. But Done. Pr Bridget, if, if a doorway to Narnia opened and we brought out um, Mr. Mr. Um, Tumnus. Well, let's not go with Mr. Tumnus because yeah. he is very human-like. Well, one of the animal creatures that's talking, not mm -hmm. Aslan, but one of the just normal, everyday animal creatures in Narnia. A normal Narnian man or woman um, and began talking to you like I am right now. Would mm -hmm. you not think you should extend um, all the same rights and privileges to that creature over and above a normal world of man, world of Adam, uh, beaver, or whatever? Sure. Yeah. If like... Uh What's the the little beaver from Guardian of the Galaxy rocket? There you go. Yeah. Rocket, yeah. Sure. You'd treat him like a person. Yes. And assume that he could be saved? I, I don't know. I would assume it. Uh, <laughs> Safer sure, to make the I, assumption. I, I would assume that he can have the beliefs consistent with what a saved person would have. But there again, Jesus bore the image of man uh, to be the acceptable substitute for human beings. So, you know, he can't five years from now, when the raccoon alien invasion comes, people are going to dig this video up and you're going to be a bigot saying that these raccoons are not. Yeah, but I'm a Jesus bigot time. now for a million different things that I don't even believe. I just I, the second I say I'm a Christian, I'm a bigot for something. I'm a, you know, racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, et cetera, phobe, whatever. Faithiest atheist says, I don't hate Pritchett's guts. I think he's intrinsically valuable and insufferable, but still valuable. <laughs> I aim to be insufferable. That's part of the thing, right? That's why you're All here. right. Well, this has been fun today. I don't... How long have we gone? Have we gone... Oh, we've only gone for 48 minutes, but are there any other things anybody wants to say about anything? Bridget, do you have any other comments or should we just... Uh, Gregory Fisher on? has a question. Uh -huh. at Trinity, if it says at Trinity Radio, it's a question. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah. You're so smart, Pritchett. Well, and the question mark kind of gives it away. He reads all these books on YouTube yeah, and stays and ahead of the, the game. Yeah, I took uh, third grade grammar. How many sentient beings could honestly atheists bring around for a discussion? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I'm okay with um, the universe being populated with all sorts of sentient beings. Doesn't affect my Christianity at all. Yeah. But, well, but yeah, as far as that goes, <clears throat> all humans are persons doesn't necessarily mean that all persons are human. It, it, that's easy. So it didn't defeat really. But um, Braxton, what do you think about aliens? Um, Has your thoughts changed since the last time I asked? What did I say last time you asked? I don't know. It's been several. I have no problem. We haven't talked about it. So I have, my years. worldview is completely at ease with the notion of aliens. Yeah, mine too. It do would change my worldview none, except now there'd be aliens in it. And, but you do think that they could be saved. Well, I, um, now, here's another thing. Like, we're, when, what we're talking about is a fully orbed, they've got the same IQ that a human does, right? Is that what we're talking about? Like, they're in the range of IQs that human beings... Sure. Or, uh, or That we would consider greater. average intelligence or greater. Okay. Well, if they were greater, they would skip us and we'd never know they were there. But, okay. I, if you pinned me down theologically, I'm not sure I would know exactly what to say. But as I said about your about Rocket um, or the Narnian man, I would presume that they could be saved. Uh, I would not lie to them, but I would presume that they could be saved to err on the side of caution. Besides, what's your favorite hymn? That one that was written in the 60s about a God of Earth and outer space. And it talks about the, going into the stars to evangelize and tell about Jesus out there. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know what I would say? I'll tell you what I become Calvinist with respect to the aliens. I'd say I'd say I don't know who God has chosen to <laughs> save. All I know <laughs> is that and I'm supposed to preach the gospel the to go. every creature. Yes. There you go. To every creature. We got that some might more be questions because they sense that we're about to wrap up. So that's that's where do we get where 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 oh, I see at Trinity Radio, which is what you tell them to do. I tell them to put question. They just don't care. I would love to see a conversation between Pritchett and the new kid on the block, Kenny. Who? Kenny? 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 I, I I don't I don't know any Kenny. I don't know Kenny. You talking about Kenneth McGee? 
Um, yeah, well, pretty sure you can debate Kenneth McGee if you want. All right, well, folks, I'm going to tell you what. All right, Finding Truth, Santi has a question. And go go, ex- go uh, subscribe to his channel. Yeah, what do you think about people He's using having- extreme cases to support abortion? Well, your question kind of makes the point. We did talk about it earlier in this very show. We agree with the sentiment, I think, that you're pressing, which is if it were someone like, like I think, honestly, atheist or somebody that I was chatting with, or maybe it was Kevin, one of the atheists that is friendly with us was asking just a little bit ago in the chat. I just had, I had gotten several layers in the row, but I, it was something like that. Like, well, but what you're saying, Braxton, doesn't allow for like in the case of a mother or like a, like, like if the life of the mother is in danger or this the, or that yeah, other the thing. Life, and it's the like health because they do all kinds of, crazy, right. If you say health, it's, it's mental health. And I'm sad yeah. if I have to raise this baby. So or if that's, or, yeah, no, you know, the life, not but, the health. Language yeah, matters. no, I, I, I'm i for having a rational discussion about that. I'm for I'm OK. I have explained why I I am not necessarily against the notion of um, in the case of that the mother is is going to die or something, but um, not in the case of uh, not in some of the other cases you might expect. And so we do kind of parse that out. Uh, but 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 the I, what we reject is the notion of taking those cases as Santi is hinting at and then using those to as pry open pry yeah, open the lid of abortion when, when someone always brings up well and there's a lot of discussion about whether like entropic surgeries or whatever whether that's actually counts as abortion so uh, there, there's that you can always mention and then there's the, the 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 whenever you get asked about rape I always say so you support a nationwide ban on abortion except for rape cases and when they tell you no then you know that they're just making a red herring. You know that they're just appealing to pity. It's fallacious. It has nothing to do with the vast majority of abortions and what we're talking about when we talk about abortion. So it's meaningless. And it's hatred towards rape victims to use them as rhetorical puppets. Kevin O'Connor says, question, like call in where we can have a group. He says like he he thought it'd be cool if we did uh, did calls. We'll consider that. We will consider that. All right. Uh, the problem with that is def- sometimes you get unruly callers. I understand why Matt Dillahunty actually hangs up. We don't want to be have to slam the phone down on people. Yeah, and and a lot of people they get they get amped up. We're not a show where we tolerate potty mouths. Ah, uh, that's and, true. And and so I know that that you and I keep it family friendly, and I'm not going well, to trust still, you others. Still, to keep you it still family. say poo more than I would prefer. But and you use the poop emoji more than I would like. I love the name Deforest. It reminds me of Deforest Killer. Thank you for that incredible super chat. Legit, Thank seriously, so that much. is incredible. Keep up the good work. Thank you so so much. Thank Whoever you named you from Deforest, the you need to thank hearts. your parents. That is an awesome name. Period. That's pretty I would, cool. I wish I was Deforest Pritchett. But anyway. Uh, Uber was recommending you debate Kenneth because pretty much anyone but him has Christianity wrong. He makes Pritchett's view look like progressive Christianity. <laughs> oh, this Kenny guy? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. The whole like the whole progressive Christian thing, it's like you remember I'm old enough to remember when old earth creationism was considered progressive Christianity. Like, oh, you're you're liberal for that. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. old earth creationism, I forget theistic evolution, just old earth creationism, right? Mm-hmm. Or egalitarianism or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those things that, that it's weird, the things that we fight about within Christianity and what keeps getting, you know. But but someone would say, like this Kenny fellow, or like the KGV fundamentalist only people, right? Mm-hmm. They would say... That, yep, the second you start allowing in the old earth creation, it's like Braxton or whatever. It's a slippery slope all the way to, you know, we're going to uh, ordain LGBTQ people, right? And they will, they will, and Ken Ham even will say it's because of people like Braxton. By compromising on this one thing, this is why we have all the rest of it. And it's just a slippery slope. That's why and, you should. That's why you should take the time. And and the KJV onlyists in the future are going to look back and they're going to say, 
yeah, the 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 ordaining uh, lesbian Episcopalians; those are the conservatives compared to where evangelicals are now. You need to stay with the the, key, the KJV only <laughs> fundamentalists who have never changed. Dispensational KJV only, and they, that's their thing, and they're going to stick to it no matter what, and they're never going to compromise. And I have to say, there's something that they're kind of right. I know that you don't want to hear it. No one wants to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. But at the same time, I can't argue that, yeah, they're still where they were from the 80s, right? The fundamentalist crowd, whereas the rest of evangelicalism is all over the place on their like uh, social positions on various issues and, and theological positions on various issues. They're the same. Young Earth creationists, dispensationalists, all that. Haven't changed since the 80s. You have. This is first. why you need to um, listen to my other video from this week in which I, uh, you just go check it out. You'll be shocked. I'm surprised. Do, do you Tim talk the about Ancient says, fitness or farming? I mentioned AIG specifically. Talk about farming? No, I mentioned my answers in then Genesis. Not, specific. Not, Tim the Ancient, super chat, $10. Thank you so much. Thank I was you. just thinking this channel has such a good vibe to it. Never change. So glad you guys are around. <laughs> well, we don't want you to change, um, yeah. except in the areas where you're uh, not living up to your Christian calling. But we don't know what those are. And we're glad you're here. Yeah. And we don't want you to change in the ways that we know you, because those are awesome things about you. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's see. I wait. I had an honest. There's an, I love hypotheticals, Pritchett. I love mm -hmm. it when it comes to abortion. Uh, suppose a miraculous, spontaneous conception happens. Anakin after, Skywalker. After the midichlorians got together and mm -hmm. is that I, still canon or have they changed that? No, that's canon. Okay. The movies are canon. Well, they make so many books. But it's not that the midichlorians are necessarily causing the force. It's that they're attracted to the force. And they keeping the and mystery. Palpatine manipulated them to impregnate Shimmy, right? I suppose that's true. I don't, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I thought he was okay. like a. So we have an Anakin prophesied. Skywalker situation. This okay, but no book. force capabilities okay. and not bring brought to bring balance to anything that we know of. After testing, doctors shared that this fetus has genetic abnormalities that make it distinctly non-human. Is abortion okay? So now I don't know what you mean by genetic abnormalities that make it distinctly non-human. So there's a spontaneous thing, and it's more Yoda than Braxton. Well, wait a minute. Did it was it born of a woman? Spontaneous, or a was it born of a this birthing is not hard. capable person? This is not hard. It's it's it, do it. It's the, it's a Yoda like creature. It's not. No, it's it not is human. hard. I need to know. Is it born of a woman? Yes. Well, then it's human. The DNA the. What is different about it? it? Like, in order for that to even be possible, right? So no aliens there, exist. They're all humans, right? No. I oh you're so you're like we could say so like if an if an if they if if oh, an alien seed was implanted into a human egg, I have no idea whether that. I don't think we should abort that. No, if it's if it's if it's this is weird. Yeah, I don't know what's being. I thought first you just meant like there was like in a in a lab or something. There's just this fertilized egg happens, and then well, well, it depends on what it is. I don't know that that's it's not a human. Oh well, then what is it? What is it that makes it not human? Yeah, I mean, they, they, well, it's distinctly not like the like. Aliens. What does that mean? Like a fish was born there, or something that looks more or less fish like? Well, he didn't. I don't kill it. You can kill it. <laughs> I mean, not for no reason. I'm just saying. It's different if like you're, I don't even know if you're talking. I think he's presuming that it's, it, it would be a sentient creature, just not human. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my answer is no. No what? No abortion. Yeah, me too. But see, I think what he could be trying to say is. You don't right, mur murder but, baby Yoda. Like Narnia man. Like you bring the Narnia man in. Okay. You wouldn't kill him. You, you wouldn't think you could kill him. Right. Right. Because he's sentient and conscious. And he'd say, he isn't to... that the point? Isn't that the thing right now? Right. The thing that they have that makes you not want to kill them and think that they're persons is consciousness. Yeah. And so I think it's a way of trying to drive out or, or what do you call it? Bring out that intuition that it looks like the thing in both cases that's telling you this is a person. Well, sentient. Is the sentience. Yeah. So then if it's not yet sentient, can you kill it? 
This is the type of thing that would be. Yes. Right. No. Okay. The same thing is if Braxton Hunter's asleep and he's not having dreams that, that he is experiencing. And yeah, I can't kill Braxton either. Braxton would love it no matter what it is. I love comments like this that just further detail our, our personalities. Um, the channel that loves aliens, right? Is that our new thing? <laughs> would Michael Heiser be okay with Nephilim abortions? Uh, okay, this, we're, we're, we're kind of trailing off here, folks. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. We did make it to the hour mark. It's always a blast hanging out with you, yeah. our atheist and uh, Christian. This was a and very Bible friends. bro down in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, it got a little weird. A I, I think that honestly, atheist was asking something much more. Oh, here we go. Did you read this already? We could, we could suppose maybe it's an alien or a Neanderthal or some non-human animal. I think the interesting part is what qualities we consider relevant. Yeah, okay, so we did kind of talk about yeah. that. Yeah, that's okay. what I thought he meant. See, man, yeah. I, I, I understand. Today, I got to tell you something. I'm just going to say it. I'm just gonna say I know it. what you were trying to say. Because nobody's going to get to this point. Nobody, nobody's going to watch this far except the folks that are here right now. That's probably not true. But listen to me. I have been experiencing extreme, um, not extreme. I've been experiencing what to me, a pansy like me, someone who's been a pansy for the last several years when it comes to eating and weight loss. Um, I, I have been experiencing extreme Others hunger. would consider that as well. <laughs> I, I've been experiencing some, some extreme hunger, not because I'm anorexic or something like that, but just because I've been limiting my food at all. And, and doing I've good. I've forgotten what that. First, I, start with the good news. I've lost 30 pounds. That's the good news. And um, uh, that's good. But it has meant that today, this is the first Trinity Way radio we've done where I've noticed this, but it's it's like, I think the lack of calories is making me not as clear uh, as I typically am. So I'll try to figure that out, folks. But uh, yeah, it's just diet and exercise. There's no tricks. There's no gimmicks. It's just I get up and walk every morning like six miles. Yeah, and move and don't eat as much. It's yeah. simple. That's how you get in shape. Yep. That's it. But if you need help, you can go join Theology Geek Fitness where that man over there who is a beast will show you how to go from being uh, what he was to what he is now. Yeah. And trust me, you'd be happier with what it is now. You know, with that background, you look like you're um, at the red carpet for a Nickelodeon event or something. That's fine. Works for me. You made it. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> oh my gosh. Nikki says, my 88 year old Jewish atheist dad changed his mind last week and is now pro life. Save Praise the Lord. Minds can be changed. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys uh, rejoicing with me about the fact that I've become less of a man. Yeah, faith is atheists and do pull-ups. Yeah, pull-ups. Thanks for telling me. Uber Scheiser says, lay off the carbs. Your head will be clearer. That's great. All right. Well, Pritchett, I've really enjoyed this show that I've done with you today. This has been a special time that you and yes, I have Yes, and I want to I give a special shout out to all of our pro-life, or even mostly pro-life, anything for the pro-life cause, uh, atheist friends. and uh, Ooh, quickly become pro-life so you yeah. can appreciate this compliment he's given. Yes, if you're an atheist who's pro-choice and you want to actually be complimented by me, become pro-life, and, and this will apply to you as well. Yeah. Uh, finding truth. Close to 90 pounds now. Pritchett yes. was an inspiration. Well, thank you. I was inspired by others uh, myself, so we just pass it on. So when you get uh, the uh, Herculean-type physique that you're after, Santi, uh, be an inspiration to others and encourage them uh, to, to be yeah. healthy. We want right. people... We not only want babies to be born, but we want people to be healthy and live longer and, you know... Uh, and diet and exercise. And by diet, I don't mean go on a diet. I mean, eat healthy. We live in a world of, especially in the United States, of horrible, horrible food. And the myth is it's expensive to eat healthy. No, it's not. I prep my food. Even with inflation, my average meal cost me $1.55. It's up from one thirty-three. dollars So uh, figure that out. But yeah. Um, it's still a dollar fifty-five, and I have a protein. I have uh, a starch like a sweet potato or quinoa or rice, and then I have a green vegetable in my meals. It's not expensive. Just eat healthy. And 
we'll see you next time on Trinity Radio. I love how your head takes up less space. You can tell you've lost weight in your face, dude. <laughs> <laughs>